Well, howdy folks, welcome back to the shop. So today we're gonna work on this, uh, it's actually an Excel pressure washer made by Develibus. Um, so it's a 2400 PSI pressure washer, three gallon a minute, um, with a six and a half horsepower Honda engine on it. So this thing was given to me and um, everything looked fairly new on it. So I was kind of curious what was wrong with it. So I dove down into it and found that the carburetor just need cleaned in it. Uh, and it started right up and ran. Well, then it was leaking oil. So then I found that um, there were some issues in the pump here, and that's where we're gonna be at today. We're gonna actually go over the pump again. Um, the main reason why we're getting into it t today is because the seal on the main crankshaft inside here is leaking. And um, it's not leaking terribly. Uh, the fluid level's right here, and it keeps on getting lower and lower. And before any more damage gets done, I wanna rip into it and find out what you know what's going on in there so i had got new seals for this um it's uh falking up but they're it's a new seal kit they're relatively cheap so this is a ar pump a nobody reverby i think is how it's pronounced um so everyone always says ar probably because like me they can't pronounce it very well so what happened to this pump just to give you a little bit of history is someone didn't take the care of it to either flush out the water for the storage or didn't put it in a warm area for the winter time and it froze and broke all the pistons inside. It broke the, um, the valves that are inside here and it also cracked the unloader housing. So all that stuff was replaced and relatively cheap, uh, surprisingly. Um, the most expensive part was the unloader and you can find that online. I think it's like 60, $70 or somewhere in that range. But we're gonna go ahead and take this pump off and take it inside since it's rather loud out here today. For some reason, the traffic seems to be heavy, so it'll be quieter. So whenever I get it inside there, we're gonna walk through and tear the whole thing apart. And I'm gonna walk you through basically on how to rebuild this and also inspect all the pistons and the valves and everything inside here as well. So with that said, let's start taking this pump off and let's get inside. Okay, so these pumps are relatively easy to get off. Um, one thing you need to do is there's a hole usually on these pumps on, on this coupler here and you have to turn it over till you get the set screw upright and then you can break that loose and um, sometimes if you can't get it to break loose you can do that and then just loosen it up I usually never take it out but then after that it sees uh, four bolts here and um, since it's a Honda engine and all that, uh, I would guarantee everything on this is going to be metric. So the heads of these are 13 millimeter. Okay, once you get all the bolts out, you should be able to just give it a snug and pull and uh, it come right off. And you can see that there's this green oil down in there. It's hard to see the color on the camera, I'm sure, but... You can see there's green oil in here, which is telling me that this front seal is bad. All right, so let's go inside and uh, take this apart. All right, so we've got all, almost all the oil out of this. You're still gonna have some residue oil still in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this unloader off and uh, usually they're relatively easy to come off. And there's O-rings in this. These are basically, uh, what they call banjo bolts and you can see it's got some sort of slime in it and this this one here is set up this way that you can actually pull it off of there uh, so there must be something reacting with the water because that slime is in there All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take all the bolts here out. They're uh, number five. All right, so after that, usually these, you slide them off. And there you go, you can see all the pistons here. A little bit of history is I already changed these pistons in here because uh, whenever someone had let this freeze, it cracked every single one of these. So I was worried that it might have cracked this. Um, we inspected it, we could not find any cracks in it. But, you know, we're gonna take it apart again and just double check. 
even though everything seems to be working right, we're just going to double check. So there's also three seals up behind here that we need to change. All right, so the next thing we're going to do, um, like I said, we're going to inspect everything. I already loosened these up. So we're going to take all of these out. Okay, and inside here is where your valves are. And there's two of them that just come out. And then the third one's still right there. And the only reason why we're doing this is we're going to check that all the O-rings and everything in here, uh, again, just because. So we're going to take these things off, or these caps off too. And like I said, this is only for inspection purposes. These caps are all the same. The valves are all the same too, by the way. So you don't have to worry about getting them all mixed up. Um, sometimes these are a little bit picky to get out. Sometimes they fall right out. So, uh, but anyway, like I said, these were replaced already because the back side of these, these are plastic here. Uh, whenever it was froze, these all cracked. So, um, we had new ones, so we put them in. So we're just going to set this aside until we get to the cleaning stage. And if you're wondering, you can see that there's little copper washers on these. But uh, if you're wondering, these are just ceramic. Okay, and then there's these three shims uh, or brass washers underneath these. Uh, pistons and I did measure them just to make sure that they were all the same thickness so because um, I wasn't sure if they were something different there so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take these four bolts here out and they look like they are a number four yeah four millimeter all right so there you go and this has Okay, there is the O-ring back here. That's what I was wondering. So the O-ring's right here on this. Um, but one of the things that I wanted to look at in here, and um, I don't see anything. Uh, it, it's not uncommon to break one of these. So I just wanted to verify, you know, that everything looks good in here, in which it does. So that's a, that's a plus. All right, I'm gonna drain some more oil out. All right, guys, so I was struggling to um, figure out how this back seal come out. Um, so I did take, take and tap, put this in the press and put a little bit of pressure on it just to see. And something was stopping it. So I did the old trick of, and you can kind of see it, hammered a screwdriver through and popped this open. So that's how I got that seal out. And look, there's two snap rings in there. So I'm glad I didn't put too much more pressure on it, but that makes perfect sense now. So with that said, we can get these guys. Typical fashion of a snap ring. As soon as you get pressure on them, they fly somewhere, right? And I went ahead and reversed these pliers and we should be able to Was able to get that one from not flying around on me so um we're just going to go ahead and put it in the press and we're going to put some light pressure on this and uh hopefully it'll start pushing it out because really we don't need to take this bearing out as long as we can get the shaft out and the only reason why we're doing this is so we can get these seals down in here so i'm going to try pressing it all right so i just wanted to show you real quick you know getting this out is kind of a pain you kind of have to work it kind of like a camshaft in a car and then you can get this all out so there's that there's the bearing it's on the front it's a roller bearing the seal pushed out with it um, and then after that you can just pull these guys out 
and there's your rod and your uh, connecting rod and stuff so I already marked these I don't know if it matters actually that's interesting they are actually marked this says one on it and this one says two and um, that one says three so they already are marked for us which is interesting because I marked this as number two and it was in number one so that's kind of interesting so so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get everything cleaned up there's these three seals up here that I'm gonna go ahead and press out or push out real quick um, you know I'm just gonna find something that I can get behind them and then just pop them right out so with that said guys I'm gonna go ahead and get everything cleaned up um, make it real nice and pretty and then I'll bring you back when we're getting ready to assemble everything so hang tight uh, it shouldn't take me long but um, since I don't see anything that's really damaged here um, since I have these bearings out I am very uh, really debating whether I should go ahead and get these replaced I can tell you that these bearings seem like they're in really good shape so I don't know if I want to just reuse them or not it's kind of one of them things I'm in here everything else is kind of new already you know new you know I'm gonna put all new seals and everything in it and what's another twenty dollars in bearings to have a nice pressure washer that you know that everything is basically brand new in it so I'm gonna debate on that but either way like I said I'm gonna get everything cleaned up and if I get new bearings and stuff um, it might take me a day or two and then uh, I'll bring you back before I get off the line here if you look there is no lines or any type of stuff in here that would have caused that front seal to leak and I was looking at the seal and I don't understand why it was leaking the only thing that I can say is both of the rear seal and this front seal they're dry rotted really bad for some reason so I don't know if the previous owners where it was sitting you know it maybe it was in the sun I mean but this front seal is up underneath this case so you can't see it but Either way, regardless, like I said, I got everything here. So, and this crank is in excellent shape. It actually don't even have hardly any wear on it. You can see a little bit of wear there. Um, same with this one right there. I mean, so little wear on this. So that tells me that this pressure washer was not used very much. So with that said, guys, like I said, three times already, I'm gonna go ahead and get everything cleaned up and I'll bring you guys back. All right, guys, I decided I am going to go ahead and get new bearings. Um, these bearings are actually relatively cheap. I think this one's like $10, and this one's uh, about the same, about $10, $15, or something like that. So for another $25 in bearings, uh, I guess why not? But uh, what I wanted to show you real quick here is I took and measured the crank on all the journals. And then I also measured all the rods here. So all the dimensions here, you know, it's 1.2988, you know, 1.2993, 1.2989. They're really within tenths of each other. So then I measured all the rods in the same thing. They're 1.3023, 3 or 1.3026, 1.3023. So that gives me roughly three and a half thousandths on that one, uh, three thousandths and three tenths on that one, and three thousandths and four tenths on that one. So in other words, the tolerance in these are pretty much spot on so we're not going to mess with anything we're just going to go ahead and put them back in in the, the order we took them out so um with that said guys stay tuned for part two of this series here um i'm going to go ahead and get these bearings in order and then uh, we'll resume putting this all back together so thanks for watching and stay tuned for part two take care